Hello and welcome to Bay College's Online Lectures for College Algebra. I'm Jim Helmer. And in section 8.6, we're going to discuss systems of nonlinear equations. In the previous section, we talked about linear equations and their systems. Now we're going to look at nonlinear equations because not everything is going to be a straight line. So the first way to solve these, just like we did in linear equations, is we're going to look at graphing them. This is where we're going to use a graphing utility. Um, the first equation we have is y equals 2x squared minus 4x. And hopefully we recognize this to be a parabola. And I put it in blue so you could see this would be uh, the parabola. If we didn't have a graphing utility, we could complete the square on this and find out that it has a vertex of positive 1, negative 2. Uh, this here is a reciprocal function. And if we are going to graph it, this one is already solved for y, so we could just plug it into uh, our calculator in the graphing under y1. Maybe y2 for this, well, what we have to do is we have to solve it for y. So we divide both sides by x. And we see, hey, this x is in the denominator. It is a reciprocal function. And it's negative here, so we have a reflection. And if we see, if we put that on our graph, we would see that our reciprocal function is reflected across the y-axis, or actually through the x-axis because of this negative out here. Now, if we use the uh, intersection function of our calculators, we can choose a spot on the first curve and then the second curve, maybe an upper limit and a lower limit. And our calculator will tell us this value. Now you can see I've already done this in my calculator. And transferred it to the board here, you can see it's not a very nice number, right? Our x value at negative 0.839 is the x value right here. And our y value is 4.766, this value right here. So this is the intersection. This is the uh, consistent solution to this system. And there is only one. We can see here it doesn't intersect the graph at all. And you would see that if you had the appropriate viewing window in your graphing calculator. So we can use a graphing utility to graph some more complex functions. Let's uh, take a look at another example where we can go ahead and do it by graphing. Now this one's not too bad. To graph this in a calculator, however, we'd have to solve this for y. And it can get pretty ugly. We're going to get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth x squared uh, plus 4. Now, that's not very nice to graph. I'd actually have to put it into two equations. But hopefully, we recognize this and say, this is the equation of an ellipse. And if we put an ellipse in standard form, we set it equal to 1. We divide everything by 4. And we get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 1, essentially. And I'll write it in there, over 1 equals 1. Now, this is an ellipse that is stretched plus or minus 2 in the x and plus or minus 1 in the y. So let me just put those on the graph. So this would be 1, 2, 1, 2, up 1, down 1. And if we graph that ellipse, it looks something like that. So maybe by graphing it, we really don't need that graphing utility. Sometimes we recognize these to be something we're familiar with. Otherwise, we end up solving this for y. And I'll do that just in case you're not familiar with uh, the ellipse right off the, uh, the top of your head by viewing it. If I solve this for y, I have to subtract x squared from both sides and then divide by 4, which would give me negative x squared over 4 plus 1. And then I'd have to take the square root to get rid of my x squared, so plus or minus the square root of this quantity. So you can see, if I'm putting this into my calculator, I have to put in for y1 the square root of this quantity, and for y2 the negative square root of this quantity. The positive gives me the top half of my ellipse. The bottom gives me, or the negative gives me the bottom half of my ellipse. Now, hopefully, we look at this and say, hey, this is just the equation of the line. Let's put this in slope-intercept form. If I divide everything by 2 and just rearrange it, I get negative 1 half x plus 6. That's just dividing by 2 and putting the x term first. So it's in slope-intercept. Now, this I can graph without a graphing utility. I know the intercept is 6. If this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're way up here. 
And maybe I want to find another point. Well, let's uh, set this equal to 0. Well, half of what number, when added to 6, would be 0? Well, negative 1 half times 12 would be negative 6, plus 6 is 0. So this value would be 12. It's some value way out here. And if we think about it, it's a negative slope of 1 half, so down 1 over 2. So we're getting a graph that's way over there. Now, if we look at this, in the previous one, using a graphing utility, we saw that there, it was a consistent system. There was a solution. Well, here, we see that this line does not intersect this ellipse, which means there is no solution. This is an inconsistent system. No solution. They do not intersect. But just to keep in mind, when it comes to nonlinear systems, in linear systems, we were only looking for one solution. <clears throat> in nonlinear systems, we can actually find multiple solutions. As an example, what if this line had a different intercept? Maybe it went through the origin. We would actually have two solutions, one here and one down here. So we can find multiple solutions. So keep that in mind when working with systems of nonlinear equations. Let's look at a couple more examples. The first one we're going to look at is we're going to use substitution to solve this one. Now, if we look at it, first thing we always want to do with any system is just assess it. What am I dealing with here? I'm dealing with the parabola. And maybe I'd want to put that parabola in standard form. And this equation here, hopefully I recognize this as a circle. Good review from chapter 2, section 4, right? x squared plus y squared equals 25. That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5. Now, if I'm going to use substitution, just like I did in linear equations, I've got to choose a variable to solve for. Well, I look at this, and I'm just going to assess it initially. I say, well, I could solve this for y. And then if I use substitution, I'm going to get negative x squared plus 5 and have to square that. I'm going to have a fourth power polynomial. Maybe that's not something I want to do. Well, when it comes to substitution, I can substitute in any value as long as I can solve for it, and it is in the other equation. I look at this and say, well, this is x squared. This is x squared. I'm going to take this equation and solve it for x squared. Just subtract y from both sides. Well, that wasn't so bad, right? I just subtracted y from both sides. Now I can do a substitution. It doesn't have to be a linear value. If x squared is this value, I can take this entire value and substitute it in for x squared. Now, if I do do that using substitution y squared plus this quantity here, which is negative y plus 5 equals 25, now I can see, hey, this is just a quadratic. I can solve for y. So I subtract 25 from both sides, get it set equal to 0. Oh, it just happens to factor, which is good news, to y minus 5, y plus 4. So my y values are positive 5 and negative 4. Now, once I found these values, I have to plug them back in to find the x value. Well, this is already solved for x squared, so I'm just going to plug it in. For the y value, if I put in 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. x squared equals 0. Well, if I take the square root of 0, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, I get 0. So when y is 5, x is 0. Now, if I put in negative 4, negative negative 4 is positive 4 plus 5 is 9. Let me just take that over here. x squared equals 9. Now, if x squared equals 9, if I use the square root property, I get x equals plus or minus 3. Because when I introduce a square root, I have to remember plus or minus. Now, if we think about this just for a moment, when y was negative 4, I got two values for x. That means I have two additional intercepts. Positive 3 when y was negative 4 and negative 3 when y was negative 4. Now, we found these three solutions. We can plug it in into each equation and make sure that these solutions work in all of them. We can also do a little bit of critical thinking, and that is, let's just graph it for a moment. We identified this as a parabola. If I put it in the standard form, it's y equals negative x squared plus 5. Well, that's a parabola that opens down that shifted up 5. 
So if I graph it, it's a parabola that looks like that. Now, this is a circle with a radius of 5. Well, that's 5 up and 5 over and 5 down centered at the origin. And if I make this circle, and hopefully you see that it is circle-ish, we can see that we're going to have three intercepts. 0, 5, that's my vertex. Well, if it's centered at the origin and 5 away, we can see that they share this point right here, 0, 5. This point down here, well, this is going to be my positive 3, negative 4 right here, and negative 3, negative 4. So just to save time, we can see that this is a valid solution to find these three points for a hyperbola, or excuse me, a parabola and a circle. But we did it algebraically using substitution. We could have substituted in for any other value. Like I said, we could have solved this for y and plugged it in had a fourth degree polynomial that maybe we used substitution to solve for. All right, so there's the answer. If you want to see it, you can pause the video, write it down. Uh, let's look at another example, but this time we're going to use the method of elimination. Just like we did with linear equations, we're going to apply the elimination method to this. The one thing we have to do about the elimination method is we have to put our variables in order so that they all line up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, let's rearrange this equation. We'll just bring it down here. Because x is squared and y squared, well, they're not lining up right now. So I just have to switch these. So I'm just going to do that. Negative y squared, I just move it over here. Positive 5x squared, I just move that over there, equals 15. And now I'm just going to concentrate on these two equations. If I'm using elimination, hopefully we recall, in order to eliminate a variable, I have to have the same coefficient of opposite sign. So just by looking at these, I, I'm going to choose to eliminate the y value. The reason why is because, well, they're already opposite sign, and these coefficients are smaller than these coefficients. So I use these as kind of a guide rule to say which one's going to be easier to eliminate. So to eliminate these, I have to make their coefficients the same. 4 times 3 will give me 12. And this one, if I multiply it by 3, 3 times negative 4 will give me negative 12. Now that middle term's going to cancel out. So I'm just going to redo the whole thing. I'm going to distribute this. 12y squared plus 16x squared equals 48. And then here I get negative 12y squared plus 15x squared equals 45. And now I'm ready to eliminate by the method of adding them together. 12y squared minus 12y squared, no more y squared. 16x squared and 15x squared is 31x squared. 48 and 45 is 93. And now let's see, can I solve this for x? Well, I can divide both sides by 31. Good news is 93 is divisible by 31, and I get 3. Now to continue solving for x, I've got to introduce that square root, because this is x squared equals 3. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So I found two values for x. Well, what I need to do is go back to this equation and find the values for y. Let's just choose one of the equations. I'm going to choose the top one, because it's still in the order it was initially. If I put in the square root of 3 and square it, I get 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 15, if I subtract that from both sides, I get this quantity equals 0. Well, what squared times negative 4 equals 0? y must be 0. And if I put in negative 3, which is the conjugate, well, if I square the conjugate, I'm still going to get the exact same result. So I know that when I put in positive 3, I get a y value of 0. When I put in negative 3, I get a y value of 0. So I found these two points. Now let's just for a moment assess this. This is a hyperbola, which opens in the direction of x, left and right. And this, from my original equation, is an ellipse. Now it's not a very nice ellipse. But having two solutions, we can see that they're on the x-axis. 
my ellipse is going to look something like that. So it makes sense that I could have two solutions, right? Left and right, right on the x-axis. So just a sketch of the graph says, yep, this seems like a reasonable solution. The best way to check is plug it into the other equation and make sure, confirm that. If I put negative, or if I put 0 in here, that's gone. If I put square root of 3 in here and square it, I get 3 times 4 is 12. That is a true statement. So I found the solutions. I checked my work multiple different ways. So I have an understanding of this being the solution to this system of nonlinear equations. All right. For this quiz here, I want you to try it yourself. Hopefully, you recognize this as a hyperbola that opens in the x direction. And this is a linear equation. Now, it's got nice answers. At least I think they're nice. So maybe you want to do a substitution. Um, definitely don't want to try an elimination. You, maybe you want to graph it. I would say, you know what? Try a substitution. It works out pretty well. So give it a try yourself. Make sure you know what you're doing and that you find all the solutions that make this system of equations consistent. And this is a consistent system. So this has been College Algebra, section 8.6. Thank you for watching.